Welcome back, everyone. Just a quick reminder, submit your questions with the name of your company so we can also um, acknowledge the name of your company when you submit your questions through the webinar module. All right, let's welcome our next presenter. We have Enthusiast Gaming, trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol EGLX and is building the largest media and content platform for video game and esports fans to connect and engage worldwide. Please welcome its CEO, Adrian Montgomery. Welcome, Adrian. Nice to be here. All right, we look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. And, and thanks to everyone who uh, is taking time out of their busy day to, to hear the Enthusiast Gaming story. Uh, Enthusiast Gaming is a media and content company for Gen Zs and millennials who love video games. Um, we are, as was described in the introduction, alongside Twitch, the largest gaming platform in North America. We are additionally the largest gaming platform in the United Kingdom uh, and pretty much the English speaking world. And our mandate and our mission is to buy and build fan communities. So we know that the video game industry is the largest and most dominant entertainment form in the world. It's a $200 billion a year industry. And the way we look at it is the publishers like Activision and Electronic Arts and Riot, they make the games. Uh, Google, who owns YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, which is owned by Amazon, these fangs are competing to become the broadcaster, the dominant broadcaster for the gaming content and the live streams. The part of the business that we're busy becoming dominant in is the fan communities, because anyone who has a child, anyone who has a niece or nephew knows that this connection between the 3 billion gamers in the world and their video game content is visceral. And when they're done playing the game and they log out of the Activision server, they are by no means done being a video game fan. And we want to be in front of them as much as we possibly can through their journey as a fan. So if you move to slide um, six or five, rather, the, the core pillars of our business are media and content, as I said, talent, esports and experiences. And everything we do funnels into driving engagement for this massive audience that we have. So on slide seven, or six rather, we own the fan experience. So what is Enthusiast Gaming? Enthusiast Gaming, on our platform, we have 100 websites, some of the biggest fan sites for video game publishers, games themselves, uh, sports, news, genres of games. We have some of the largest and most engaged fan communities in the world. We own the largest YouTube video game platform where we have over a thousand channels. We have Luminosity Gaming, which for four months running is the most watched esports organization in the world on Twitch. We have the biggest gamer in the world. XQC, who plays for Luminosity. We have seven competitive teams. We co-own with the Aquilini family in Vancouver, the two big Activision game titles in Overwatch and Call of Duty. And then we own and operate around 50 events, uh, both live and virtual across the world, everywhere from Hong Kong to Seattle to Toronto. Um, and we love those experiences. And for us, the common theme is that the people who come to the Sims resource website, the people who come to our live events and walk the floor, the people who log into our virtual events or follow our, our, our esports teams, these are all vibrant video game fan communities. And like I said, we will not stop until we're the dominant player uh, in this space. So what does that all ladder up to on the next slide? We have over 300 million people a month that come to our platform, 65 million in the United States, which means that virtually one in every two American males between 18 and 34 visits an enthusiast gaming property at least once a month. That makes us 
one of the 100 largest internet properties in the United States of America. But more interestingly, alongside Twitch, which as I said, is owned by Amazon, we are one of only two gaming platforms to crack that Comscore 100 list. We have a highly engaged audience who consumed over 41 billion views uh, of com content on an LTM basis. We have close to 170,000 now paying subscribers. We have a relationship between Luminosity and our YouTube platform with over 550 of the biggest gamers in the world. So in an age where people are running around, pulling their hair out, trying to figure out how to engage with Gen Zs and millennials, because they don't watch television, three and four don't watch television, 60% of Gen Zers prefer esports to traditional sports. They live on their console, they live on their smartphone. It is very, very difficult to reach Gen Z's at scale and to have them pay attention to you. So when you can represent, as Enthusiast Gaming does, that we connect with over 300 million of those folks a month and that we speak to them in a very genuine and authentic fashion through their shared love of gaming, we have a very rare and a very powerful platform to build a fantastic business off of. We move to the next slide which I think we covered the next one. So again, some, some demographic information about Gen Zs and the connection that they have with games, the connection that they have with esports. But more importantly, this is a cohort that is going to be the most disruptive cohort uh, of all time. Currently, they represent $7 trillion of global spending, but that's going to increase to over $33 trillion by 2030. And so they're going to be the most lucrative uh, cohort out there. And it just so happens, again, that feeds into our strategy. Not only are they going to be the most lucrative, but they're also the most highly elusive demographic. So to be able to reach them and engage with them and have them come back to our platform again and again, again, gives us a very rare uh, and unique advantage in the marketplace. One of the things that's fueling this dominant video game industry that is such an important point that cannot be overstated is that gaming is the next is the new social network. So 10 years ago, there was a fantastic uh, trend, a migration that happened away from traditional media to social media. And the, the investors that saw that early and saw Facebook for what it was early and YouTube and Twitter, um, they obviously did very, very well. There is a new migration happening and that is occurring away from traditional social media to the new social media of games. When young people go and play Fortnite every night, they're as interested in making new friends and talking to their existing friends as they are to play the games themselves. So gaming as the new social network is a very powerful current and a very powerful tailwind for a business such as ours. Next slide. 63% of enthusiast audience to underscore this point, don't even use Facebook. If you have a teenager in your house, I'd bet my mortgage that they're not on Facebook, but they are playing video games and they are congregating in our fan communities to discuss their love of video games. So the question is, how do you build a business from that? When you have an audience as strong and as loyal as we do, you can build a number of lucrative economic and revenue streams off of that audience. So in terms of our investment highlights, we're the leading media gaming platform in North America. We have a number of incredible industry and demographic tailwinds behind us. We speak, we're, we're Gen Z whispers, if I, if I can say that. And we have a robust monetization path. And as well, we're an acquirer of choice for these fan communities, and I'll take you through that in a little bit. 
I think we've really discussed the industry tailwinds. Um, I think we can move on to uh, perhaps move on to the, the the slides about our company because I think I think we've explained the industry tailwinds. So again, owning the fan experience, having the websites, the YouTube channels, the video network, the talent, and the experiences makes us a one-stop shop for companies that want to communicate with Gen Zs. Um, we are the only company in the marketplace today that can give the same customer access to some of the most valuable YouTube inventory and video inventory on the internet, give them access to some of the most highly engaged video game fan communities in the world, but can also pair that with access to talent and create content and customize content with some of the biggest social media influencers in the world who happen to be gamers. There's a reason Kim Kardashian and Kylie Jenner are billionaires. It's because when they promote products, those products sell. And similarly, when you have an XQC and you have a Fresh and a Muselk and a Pokimane that you can bring to bolster a campaign. And again, we're the only company that is offering all of this under one roof right now. You have a tremendous ability to move the needle and to generate a return on investment for your customers. If you look at the success that we've had, whether it was with the Biden presidential campaign, the work we're doing with State Farm, building the first ever kids academy for esports alongside Lego, the work we do to promote Hollywood blockbusters like Black Widow um, and Last Man uh, and Fast and the Furious 9. Each and every one of these campaigns, the, the work we're doing with Samsung, each and every one of these campaigns has customized content, esports sponsorship, access to talent, as well as this uh, highly effective uh, media inventory. So how do you build a business around that? Well, what you do is you sell a lot of advertising. Again, um, Gen Z advertising is a highly lucrative um, business for us, as well as the direct sales campaigns that we're starting to execute. And so really, um, programmatic advertising dominates the media landscape right now, but the more and more inventory that we convert to direct sales, the more and more high margin revenue we can make. And we've had a lot of success with our direct sales campaigns in Q1, of 2020, we hired our first direct sales person. Uh, fast forward a year in Q2 of 2020, we rejoiced when we did 600,000 of direct sales revenue. In Q2 of 2021, we just reported 4.4 million in direct sales. And that is continuing to grow because again, customers who want to engage with Gen Z's need, need a video game strategy. And we are effectively, because of the asset mix that we've built, a one-stop shop for them. And that's why these Fortune 100 companies are choosing to do business with us time and time again. So if you look at the list of clients, again, we've been at this relatively uh, for, for a short period of time. Um, there's endemic brands like Activision. There are sophisticated uh, consumer product brands like Gillette. Um, there is, we worked uh, with the U United States Ad Council to raise awareness for, gen uh, for vaccine awareness for, for Gen Zs. We work with professional sports leagues. We work with uh, insurance companies. Again, the road to a Gen Zers, the path to a, to, to a, to a man's stomach, as my grandmother would say, uh, to, to a man's heart is through his stomach, the, the path to a Gen Zers wallet uh, is, is, is through video games. So fast forward to, um, to our growth strategy. Um, look, here's the business model in simple terms. We sell advertising both programmatically and directly. We're starting to sell 
a lot of subscriptions. We've grown that business from 50,000 at the start of last year to over 170,000 today. That's recurring revenue at an average price point of $5 US. And when you have a denominator of 300 million people, there's a lot of subscription and premium content that you can package and sell to this audience. So we're very excited about the growth potential um, of subscriptions. And then as we move through the life cycle of this business, we have an opportunity to license our content. We have an opportunity to build social platforms and e-commerce platforms. And it all comes from the respect that we have to build this highly engaged, large audience of Gen Zs and gamers. So programmatic advertising, direct sales, subscriptions, moving into e-commerce, moving into a social platform. That is our organic growth strategy. And that's how we've been able to take this business from 16% gross margin to 21.5% gross margin in only a few quarters. We expect continued margin growth in our company. Um, and that's on the organic side. On the mergers and acquisitions side, the sh there is no shortage of fan communities for us to buy. And these are highly, highly uh, high margin businesses as standalone entities because most of the content is user generated. So we can buy profitable standalone fan communities. We're very well respected in the industry for, for respecting the, the grassroots authentic nature of these communities and for allowing them to flourish. So we've done a number of acquisitions for this year, none of them in a competitive process because people want to work with us and become part of our flywheel. And then when we take that standalone business and we give our 30 person direct sales team access to the inventory and we give our uh, subscriber acquisition and retention people access to build subscription and freemium models off of that, and we start to use our audience to amplify the popularity. We make that flywheel churn, and that is what is driving this, this relatively significant growth in our margin and driving you know, what has been 25 30% growth just organically uh, on our revenue. So we're feeling really good uh, about the state of our business. Um, we have a lot of runway in front of us. We have a robust pipeline of acquisition targets. We have a number of joint venture partnerships. And it all comes down to the fact that we have a very large, very hard to find audience who is highly engaged and they come back to us again and again each and every month. So I might stop there and ask if, if there are any questions. Great presentation. Yes, we do have quite a few questions. Um, Braxton Kane says, the purchase of Addicting Games marks the first time Enthusiast has acquired a game developer. What made this an attractive asset for you and your team? Well, we're thrilled with the Addicting Games acquisition. Um, not only does it add 10 million uh, players a month, who are spending an average session time of 15 minutes a month. Not only does it give us a toehold into this $80 billion a year casual games market with a very, very recognizable brand and great titles like Type Racer, uh, Little Big Snake, Math Games, et cetera, et cetera. Not only does it also give us uh, an ability to bolster existing revenue streams like subscription, but it gives us access to new revenue streams like in-app purchases and in-game advertising. But at the end of the day, we are very disciplined about building communities and building fan communities. And the one thing that powers the engagement of any fan community is great content. And Addicting Games has great content that is going to power the engagement of our communities. Not to mention the fact that we now have a 30 person strong game developer that we can take into our next meeting with a Pepsi or a Cadillac and say, not only are we gonna give you the sponsorship, not only are we gonna give you access to the talent, but let's create 
a customized game that we can make popular. Um, our sales team is really excited about having that arrow in their quiver. And so it, it's just very strategic on a number of levels, not to mention uh, accretive to margin, accretive to revenue, and a profitable business on its own. Thank you for that. Uh, Ethan Villa says, last month, Intain announced that it would purchase Unicorn Esports and that the company would name a head of esports. This would seem to be the first big move by a betting and gambling company into esports and competitive gaming. What do you and your team look at this space and how do you consider deals like that? Well, Entain is, is a massive company and they recognized what, what we've seen, which is that the future is not only in, in esports from a betting perspective, but that the Gen Z and millennial cohort that play video games um, over index on their likelihood to participate in betting and eye game. If you look at the Entain, and I encourage everyone to look at the Entain investor presentation from I believe it was August 12th, it says right here, video gamers are up to 4.3 times more likely to participate in betting, and they're up to four and a half times more likely to participate in eye gaming. And for us at Enthusiast, we see the same data. And what's really exciting right now is these media betting partnerships that are being announced on an almost daily basis um, are going to uh, revolutionize the media landscape going forward. Um, and we believe that this is a huge area of growth for us and something we're actively pursuing. We want to do it right. But again, the feedback we get is, you talk to how many Gen Zs a month? You, you, you have access to what kind of talent? Oh, now you own a company called Addicting Games, so we could take Type Racer and do tournaments with it and create a whole gamified content experience around it. Um, we're very bullish about the gambling media partnership landscape and, and, and our potential role in it. Uh, Jacob Foster says, I see you have a Luminosity logo on your background screen. Do you have connections with their gaming organization? We own them. <laughs> we own Luminosity. Um, we own, uh, and again, the most watched esports organization in the world. Um, the biggest gamer in the world, XQC. We have some of the biggest YouTube stars uh, who play for Luminosity. Um, so it's a very important part of the flywheel. Uh, esports, in fact, is the smallest part of our business, but very important and very important from direct sales. So if you think about some of the great stuff we're doing to promote Hollywood movies, some of the stuff we're doing currently with the United States Navy and with Lego, Luminosity is a key, key component of those direct sales campaigns. So we're excited to have them in our fold. TB says, you recently made an open market purchase of shares. I enjoy management aligned and willing to buy along with shareholders. Can you speak about Menashe Kestenbaum, his vision and what impact he has had on you? Well, Menashe is, is the soul uh, of our company. He is the gamer, uh, the gamer's gamer in our company. And he's encouraged us um, to look beyond the the direct sales and the subscriptions he his passion is is to is to address a void in the marketplace and build the first gamer centric social media platform which we're uniquely capable of doing that's his passion project um he is the father of upcomer which we believe will be the the next espn of esports so he's the soul and the conscience from from a, and and always represents the gamer's interest and, and the gamer's point of view around the management table. And he's taught me a lot and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a ton of fun to work with and, and a great human being and a great partner. Al Olmsted says, as a stockholder, I'm excited about the recent company additions. However, there have been strong downward pressure on the stock. Is this due to the supply line chip shortage? If not, what's the driver? Well, I, I, I can't comment on the stock. Um, I All I know is what we're building, uh, and I know why we're building it. And if you look at where this business is today versus where this business was at a year ago, 
If you look at the strong growth in margin, the M&A that we've done, the bolstering of the fan communities, the surge in subscriptions, the surge in direct sales. I'm proud to say that this hardworking management team has done what they've set out to do, not to mention reducing leverage, uh, increasing our cash balance, really putting ourselves in the, in the pole position seat to build the dominant fan community platform for video gamers in the world. So that's what we're focused on executing. Um, and I expect that, that people will, uh, will, will catch up to that at some point. Uh, Thad Quang Pham says, uh, oh, excuse me, um, where did that go? Yes, uh, says, do you plan to cooperate with GameStop? I saw the chairman of Enthusiast Gaming tweet about a possible cooperation. We're open to any and all uh, collaborations. We think GameStop is a company we could we could help an awful lot. Um, but again, where, where we want to make our partnerships, um, we did a deal recently where Coldplay came and asked us to help promote their new single. So big internationally recognized artists are looking at the enthusiast gaming platform to launch new music. Um, gaming will be the nexus point for fashion, music, lifestyle. And so there's a number of partnerships we can have across the board. Um, so we wouldn't say no to anything. And, and you know, immodestly, we, we think as the Gen Z whispers in the marketplace, we can help an awful lot of companies. Joe Sawyer says, is China's crackdown on people playing games to three hours an issue for growth in the game space? Not for enthusiast gaming. Our focus is the English speaking world. Um, and, you know, we have not yet turned our attention to, um, you know, business growth that involves translation, that involves regulated internet, et cetera, et cetera. We're, there's three billion gamers in the world. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's there's two billion that don't live in China. And so that's a huge pond for us to fish in, to grow revenue, to grow sponsorship, to grow uh, uh, subscription, uh, to build GG, uh, our social media platform. So, so we have, we have a more than enough ocean uh, in which to fish. J Jada Hernandez says, you're a $500 million company. You were a $1 billion company. Do you need to do anything different to not only get back there, but surpass it? Well, I think we need to do more events like this today and, and explain and explain the story, which which we're always doing. We're always marketing. Um, again, we're building a dominant business with an integrated flywheel. Um, we're highly confident in our business strategy. Uh, we are a, a, more, a more financially healthy company than we were when, when we had that billion dollar valuation. We have more fan communities than when we had that valuation. Um, our gross margin is way higher than when we had that valuation. Our debt is almost zero as opposed to when we had that valuation. So again, we're gonna be heads down uh, building a business. Uh, we, we, take, uh, we take umbrage from, from, from a quote from uh, a guy named Jeff Bezos, who, who says the company is not the stock and the stock is not the company. Um, he focused on the internal metrics getting better. And all I can tell you is internally, the metrics that we watch um, are growing considerably and we're really excited about that. Fantastic. Um, I think we have time for one more quick question. Matthew Smith says, Gen Z is the basis of a lot of demographics presented. What can you do to bring attention to the Zen, Gen Xers who might have more cash to pay for the subscription? I think I'm a Gen Xer. I'm a Gen Xer. I'm a Gen Xer too. And it, it always bothers me when people call me a baby boomer because, you know, I remember when Kurt Cobain died. Okay. So I'm a Gen Xer and a proud Gen Xer. Me too. Um, and, uh, and, and what, and, and remember the MTV unplugged with that green sweater he wore. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bona fide Gen Xer. Um, look, one of the reasons, uh, we bought addicting games was to broaden our reach. Casual gamers, you know, 50% of people up to, and including the age of 45 or 50, according to variety, 
uh, play casual games. It's not just about logging in and playing Call of Duty on your high tech uh, basement setup. It's about playing those games every morning, like like Type Racer and Little Big Snake, uh, on on the subway or or in the Uber on the way to work. And so um, you've touched upon one of the reasons we bought Addicting Games to broaden our reach um, into into older demographics because you know everyone is a gamer. Well, we'll end with that. Uh, great presentation. We have more questions for you, but we'll send them directly to you, Adrian, so you can address on your own time. Thank you so much for joining us on the Emerging Growth Conference, and we hope that you'll join us again and give us some great updates. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Remember, as we transition to the next presenter, you'll see a black screen, but stay with us. We're coming right back. <laughs>